So Northrop has released flight footage of the 437 Vanguard, and this aircraft is a game changer. This is breaking the mold, literally, because this thing was designed and tested and engineered all on computers and basically did test flights on computers to find weak spots prior to it actually being produced and then released. AI was used, and this to me is a way the aircraft will most likely be developed moving forward. I mean, why not save millions of dollars, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars on really extensive backend testing digitally? I mean, imagine if the F-35 was able to have done that. I mean, could have saved lots of engineering costs. Although the F-35 has some very advanced ways that it was created, there are some that were lacking. And obviously, they're going to improve on that Aerospace industries throughout the world saw that, and so this is the logical improvement of some of the missteps that most likely happened with the F-35. So this aircraft, the 437 Vanguard, took flight recently as the time of this video being published, and most likely, in my opinion, it didn't do a ton of maneuvering. I'm assuming a lot of this was testing different reconnaissance systems, maybe some electronic warfare systems, intelligence gathering systems, things that needed to be tested up in the air, and they had a specific test case, a test mission, a line that they weren't quite able to do on computers, even though they did a ton on computers prior to it being produced. This test really needed to be airborne, really needed to have the distance between whatever was being tested. So the fact that this has been released to me is a huge step in the aerospace industry, and I'm excited moving forward just to see how this technology will advance fighter aviation. I think every fighter jet that comes out next, the sixth generation fighters, they're all gonna take notes and use concepts from the 437 Vanguard, and that's just huge. The B-20 Raider was a recent bomber that was built by Northrop, and I'm assuming most likely they took a ton of notes from lessons learned from that thing, and they applied it directly to the computer engineering that was done with the 437 Vanguard, and that's just exciting. But the 437 Vanguard actually is an iteration of another aircraft, and we're going to talk about that one right now. The Model 401 Sierra project was built by Scaled Composites, and I want you to remember that name, Scaled Composites, because it just sounds like a random run-of-the-mill design firm, but it is anything but that. And to me, the fact that Scaled Composites was at the table with Northrop, hands-on, literally pointed the spear, designing this new aircraft, to me, this is a very disruptive company that's able to design and build things that probably huge companies with bureaucracies just aren't able to do. And this speaks to my fighter pilot heart. People like John Boyd, they were all about being disruptive. Now, John Boyd was you know, probably one of the biggest a-holes you've ever come across. However, he was a genius and he wasn't afraid to rock the boat and be disruptive when it came to the FX program, which was an F-16, eventually an F-15 program. So John Boyd was all about being that person in the room who wasn't afraid to say, why are we doing it like this? Why don't we do it differently? And at the time when Boyd was building the F-16, he pretty much had a little more edgy, a little more rough around the edges mindset that scaled composites has now. And the fact that Scaled Composites is a part of Northrop, it's just going to be a really cool thing to see as they build new concepts moving forward. So the 401 Sierra project, the precursor to the Vanguard 437, that started in 2017 and they went from designing this aircraft to full flight testing in 24 months. And that's just kind of unheard of. But that's what this design firm, Scaled Composites, can do. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of Scaled Composites. I'm just a big fan of disruptive technologies and stepping outside of the box and going to little companies who probably don't have the red tape that bigger companies have. But what they were able to do with the 401 was build a medium altitude aircraft that then led to the design of the 437. Now, a lot of the 401 early designs did not have a pilot in the cockpit, and then ultimately the 437 was expected not to have pilots in the cockpit as well, but they're saying that there are gonna be variants that will not have pilots in the cockpit. Obviously, the footage that we're seeing now has a pilot in the cockpit, a single place cockpit. And when I look at the design of the 437, I'm looking at what looks to me to be like a very cost-effective, lightweight F-35. I mean, very cost-effective, and that's a big part of this whole operation, is being able to 
do this like SpaceX does things, right? You don't have to overpay or overbuild. You create something that is designed specifically for the, the mission. You need a Phillips screwdriver, get a Phillips screwdriver. You need close air support, get an A-10. To me, that's what this program is all about. It's about creating an aircraft that can fly along fifth generation fighters fly along their wing and basically be a missile truck or a bomb truck. So that goes along with the 437 design and the fact that it has some stealthy elements. It's got swept wings. So for me, I'm thinking this thing's definitely a Mach 1.2 fighter, maybe a little bit faster. Those swept wings to me are, aren't something that you would put on a slow flying fighter. They're also claiming that it can carry around 2000 pounds. So you're looking at, you know, maybe two to four AMRAMs if you want it to be a missile truck or or you're looking at a 2,000 pound bomb or four or 500 pound bombs. So many different versatile things that you can do with this. And the fact that you could most likely control this thing from an F-35 cockpit, an F-22 cockpit, potentially a weapon systems operator in the back of an F-15 EX, just kind of flying this thing as their pilots flying them. I mean, there's so much potential for this to really be a force multiplier. I mean, think about putting 20 of these things out front of an F-15 EX formation and then fifth generation mixed into that F-15 EX formation. I mean, it's just exciting if you can't tell like the fact that the versatility that will come from this is really gonna create a lot of unique mission sets that can be completed. And Scaled Composites, to me, they just seem like a cool company because they named those early prototype 401 Son of Ares. So they really like giving the nod to Greek gods, which I think it's just kind of cool. And speaking of kind of cool, one of the things that has been noted on the 401 and potentially on the Vanguard 437 as well is the fact that the belly has placements for what looks to be potential directed energy weapons. So laser weapons, or maybe even like sophisticated threat detection systems, sophisticated photo technology. There's lots of new technology that's being put on this thing that I don't think has ever been put on a fighter before. And since this thing is brand new, think about it, there's gonna be adapted technology from the F-22, from the F-35, all the lessons learned, all the data collected, all that put into this computer system and then researched, developed, designed, built quickly with people that are thinking light on their feet to really create something that's mission capable. So this thing is really, to me, gonna have so much of a focus on innovative weaponry. And speaking of innovative weaponry, you know, think about things like the Star Wars program, which were basically lasers that were meant to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles that was decades ago, but think about a defensive energy weapon. So instead of just thinking offensively about directed energy, why wouldn't this thing have the ability to potentially shoot down objects with lasers? I mean, think if you've got, you know, a hundred drones coming out of Iran and you're trying to shoot those down, why not have sophisticated laser weapons that can just burn holes through, you know, a hundred of these at a time? I mean, there's so much potential for this to really be a game changer. So it's all about rapid design, prototyping, and testing. And that's something that you know government organizations typically don't do very well. So the fact that Scaled Composites is in this mix now, the little nimble, light on their feet design firm that is crushing it with designs like this. You know, you might look at this 437 Vanguard and not be very impressed. Okay, fine. But the fact that it was designed, prototyped, and built so fast with the latest technology, and you know, they can just spin these out, you know, test pretty much everything on a back end system that is costing so much less to the taxpayer. Like to me, it's just exciting. And I think it can basically reduce bloat in government programs when you bring in these super savvy design firms who have the engineering prowess to actually create something that's effective. But back to the Vanguard 437, it's powered by a Pratt & Whitney 535 single jet engine. It's got an intake above the cockpit. So another innovative design that most likely increases efficiency. And then again, back to the max speed. I don't know for sure, it's just a guess. There is a chance that it's a slower flying jet and it's just super efficient. But with the swept wing configuration, man, I gotta think this thing is at least going Mach 1, maybe a little bit faster. I mean, you don't really need to go extremely fast if you're just a missile truck who's stealth. You just gotta make sure that you have that stealth technology if you're not going extremely fast, which it looks like this thing has definitely some elements of that stealth. It's got a wingspan of 41 feet and a takeoff weight of 10,000 pounds. So again, composite material. For this to have a takeoff weight of 10,000 pounds, that's what I can find on the internet as far as what's being published. That is super light. So again, efficiency is gonna be through the roof. Most likely a loiter time in this 
I would assume like six to eight hours, something like super impressive. The composite material is gonna give it the ability to pull G-forces as well, to be nimble, have the ability to turn on a dime depending on what altitude it's at. But to me, this thing is really built for efficiency. And now the fact that you have a pilot you can put up in the cockpit, there's potential variants of these that will just be able to turn and burn and dogfight extremely fast. And then variants that'll be the missile trucks for the fifth generation fighters. I mean, there's just so many options when it comes to this thing, it's, it's pretty cool. So as far as a low cost multi-mission platform, this is exciting, this is super cool. I hope big companies take notes from Northrop and they bring in these super nimble, light on their feet, fast thinking, savvy little businesses that are just trying to make a name for themselves, but they're really good at what they do. I mean, these this is how companies like SpaceX started, in my opinion, is being scrappy, making it happen, being, you know, that hustler out there on the court who's just, you know, not afraid to just run from one into the other as fast as they can to make things happen. That's what I see scaled composites as being, and it's just super excited to watch. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please check out another video. That would mean a lot to me. I've also got a podcast coming up. You can go ahead and subscribe to that podcast and episodes will be posted here in the next couple months. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.